looking at that highly eroded limestone landscape in the Texas Hill Country. Thanks to Greg for that footage. Let's take a look at the surface map for this afternoon. Much of our weather in the Central Plains has moved out into the southeastern U.S. We've got an occluded front in Kentucky and Tennessee producing numerous cold core thunderstorms this afternoon around places like Cincinnati, Louisville, and down towards the, I guess that would be around Knoxville. The warm sector located in far northern Georgia right there, that's going to be the start of the deeper tropical air at the surface, and that's helping to support storms along the eastern Gulf Coast all the way into North Carolina. Some cooler air has filtered into the rear of that system. The surface ridge right there in East Texas, and that delineates the east side of the return flow starting to set up in South Texas. We can see those dew points up around 73 at San Antonio. And we do hit the dry line. That is going to be developing over the next one to two days. Also, lee side troughing in the high plains. This is all a regime of southerly flow. Not much going on in the Great Basin area of the southwest, but on the west coast, a new system coming into Oregon in Northern California. A good push of cold air behind that with some showers. Let's take a look out in the Pacific. Pretty quiet in the Gulf of Alaska, kind of a dry occluded system. And then we hit that perpetual supply of cold air coming off the Arctic ice pack, kind of banked up against the Brooks Range and Northern Northwest Territories. We're getting rid of that very cold sub-zero air mass, showing some relatively warm teens and 20s. Pretty quiet in the Atlantic. That's typically what we see in May and June. Things start quieting down a little bit out there as we start breaking up that Icelandic low. Still, another system coming out of Newfoundland that will be dissipating south of Greenland and we should see that come to an end there. Some snow showers coming back in through Labrador, temperatures down to 23, and that cold air helping to support this high over Hudson Bay. And that's feeding into the storm here, out there in the Midwest, and yeah, we've come full circle. Enhanced risk for the southeastern U.S. from southwestern Georgia, up to Northern Carolina, and the tornado risk has got that split up into two areas, one along that little warm front type setup. It's sort of dammed there against the Appalachians, and we've got the tropical air flowing over that boundary, and that gives us a setup similar to the warm front setups that we get there in Oklahoma and Kansas. This would be ahead of that line that already exists at this time, there it is in southern Georgia to western Florida. Tornado watch out for that, as well as the areas up to the north. I'm not sure we have too many viewers in that part of the country. I believe most of our audience is from the Midwest, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and California. But if there is anybody in the southeast, mention that in the video comments. I'm kind of curious. Dry slot rapidly working into Mississippi and Alabama. That seems to be spreading into the Atlanta area. The boundaries just ahead of that. And then, of course, the warm front up there in North Carolina. Back behind it, cold air advection filtering into the boot hill of Missouri into western Kentucky, western Tennessee. And ahead of that, the cold core system. Very steep lapse rates in the mid-levels, and we can see numerous anvils there. The SPC mesoanalysis graphics can sort that out to a certain extent. So we can go up to thermodynamics, and we'll pick, yeah, mid-level lapse rates. Check that out. We can see that there is a center there north of Chattanooga and another axis from about, uh, let's see, east of Paducah, Evansville, up to about South Bend. Fort Wayne, no, Fort Wayne. I, I get those two mixed up. I think 
South Bend's here and Fort Wayne is right there. Yeah, that's got to be right. Anyway, instability there, instability there, and all you need is a little bit of low-level moisture. The temperature records. Do you all like this segment? Do you not like it? Post in the video comments. I'm kind of curious. This is kind of a way of seeing the temperature changes in the week ahead. This is what we're looking at for this afternoon. 94 at Corpus Christi, breaking the record. Same thing at Galveston, coming up to 87. Not much of a sea breeze. And also some very warm weather in Colorado, 83, tying the record at Colorado Springs. For tomorrow, no record lows, but there are going to be record highs. That seems to be a recurring theme over the past 10 years. Well, what do we got here? Uh, coming up to 101 in West Texas, 103 at Midland, tying the record, and we're expecting 107 at San Angelo. More of the same garbage for Sunday. I guess the silver lining with this is that means ridging and a lack of severe weather. Dallas-Fort Worth coming up to 97, 94 at Longview. And for Monday, yeah, let's shovel more garbage into the mix. Hundreds across Wichita Falls, Abilene, and many 90s across Texas and to Mississippi. And yeah, I do hate this weather because that means expensive air conditioning bills. Definitely some relief in California, starting out Monday morning at 41 at Merced and 31 at Bishop. For Tuesday, many, many records being broken in the South Central U.S. from Amarillo over to St. Louis and down to New Orleans. Normally, I don't like going five days in the future on this, but we've got a heat wave. The heat wave settling in across the lower Mississippi River Valley and starting to spread up into Missouri and Iowa. And for Thursday, this does not necessarily mean the heat is abating because we are starting to fold the forecast into the climatological values, but still looking at many mid-90s in East Texas and Louisiana. All right, I think it's time to take a look at that 925 millibar dew point. Since we are starting to lose some of the low-level moisture, when are we going to get it back? Well, there we go. We got the offshore flow in Louisiana. Return flow is starting to set up in Texas there, bringing up the 60s dew points overnight tonight and more of it flowing north. You can see the dry line becoming established from about Elkhart, Kansas to Amarillo, Abilene, and Sanderson. A slug of 60s dew points coming up through DFW, moisture axis up into Pratt and Russell. So we could see the start of a few thunderstorms on the high plains tomorrow. And much more moisture coming up for Sunday, Saturday night into Sunday. In fact, yeah, that's that's late sun Saturday there, so there's been a bit of air mass recovery. Dew points really coming up there in the eastern panhandle. And then for Sunday, Looks like dry air advection into the panhandle is probably a cold front. Can't really tell for sure on this chart. But some of that moisture and dynamics moving up into Iowa, Minnesota, and South Dakota. Still hanging on to a boundary there through Oklahoma City to Abilene. Plenty of moisture along that. And here comes some very rich dew points into the Omaha area for Monday night into Tuesday. So the moisture does not appear to be a huge problem. Let's take a look at the quality. We can do that by sampling the air mass like that and looking at the soundings. And the moisture could be better. It is kind of tapering with height, but we are looking at 60s. So let's kind of see what the model is doing for breaking out precip. Now, I do think it is fine to look at the models for, you know, going out to five or seven days because that resolves a lot of the difficulty trying to diagnose the cap. You can't really do that for a huge area. So we can just look at the model indications. For Saturday night into Sunday, looks like mostly a Northern Plains event. 
kind of quiet there for late on Sunday, maybe a little action there in northern Nebraska. Then for Monday, looks like a few cells popping up there around Seymour and Eastland, Texas. Not much precip, so I think we either have a strong cap or moisture problems. Let's take a look. Yeah, maybe not so much of a strong cap as it is the lack of deep moisture. There's a lot of dry air above the surface that's going to get entrained downward. Meanwhile, you've got 73 tapering off to about 60 at 850 millibars. That's up at that level right there. And above that, even drier air. So that's not really a great setup for hanging on to the moisture. Let's see what's happening, though, on Tuesday. Yeah, there we go. Pretty organized convection there around Interstate 40. Inverted trough through Kansas and Nebraska. Then for Wednesday, yeah, a little bit of high plains action, western Kansas. And then for Thursday, looks like some storms there on the central plains. Meanwhile, look at this little tropical disturbance off the Carolinas. Where did that come from? Yeah, that moves into Georgia late in the week. Yeah, let's head on over to NHC. Products are old. Nothing being issued until May 15th. But very likely if that starts looking tropical, they'll probably resume those outlooks. The Mideast has been in the news a little bit with heat in India and a dust storm in Iraq. Let's take a look at the heat. This is going to be 10Z. So while we're sleeping, India enduring 108 heat. And man, look at Pakistan. Reporting 108 over 66, 109 over 68. That's some very sultry air. When we get 109 in Texas, usually that's with a dew point of 50 to 55 not 68 degrees. That is just incredible. And there we go. It looks like a cold front has actually kicked up that dust. Look at that large fetch of northwesterly flow. Dust being reported through a huge swath. Let's take a look at the polar orbiter imagery. Yep, that's definitely a dust storm. There it is. Looks like it's just north of Riyadh extending up to Kuwait, and I think most of the stuff in the backside, that's just weaker dust that's settling out. So the really bad dust, that's going to be right there. Let's see where it was the day before. Yep. Yeah, man, that's really a huge wall of dust. In case you can't see it, that's the plume there being kicked up by that northwesterly flow. Kind of moving like that. Let's go back to the fourth. I guess that's just where it's getting started. Up there in northern Iraq, let's put on those country overlays. Yeah, actually all the way up in Syria. And back up to the third. No trace of it. All right, well, that's quite an event. And I would bet that on YouTube, there's probably some videos. And I'll see if I can link to one at the end. And that'll do it for our Friday edition. I want to pass on this message from Adam Rolfs. He said he was finally successful in catching his first tornado. He was there for the loyal Oklahoma tornado on Monday. I owe a lot of thanks to you, my friend. I've been watching Forecast Lab for about three years now, and the knowledge you've shared has played a huge part in advancing my abilities to forecast severe weather. I appreciate the comment, Adam. I'm glad this program is helping some of you to learn more about meteorology. So I'll let you all move on with your Friday evening. Hope you all have a good one. We'll be back next week covering the severe weather. And we'll do that on Monday for the supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.